Hello, everyone, and welcome to Con Laws Podcast. We are here today with Jake and Connor. Say hello, guys. Hello. How's and my, it going? Yep. And myself, Brett. Um, today, we are talking about what lies in the future for the game industry, um, and also kind of how the game industry is going to affect culture moving forward. Um, I think we're going to break this up over the course of, you know, discussing this five years out, ten years out, fifteen years out, um, and then just kind of diving into things from there and seeing where the conversation goes. Hmm. Um, it also gives us a chance to actually, well, look into really cool sort of future tech sort of stuff and kind of fangirl at it. Absolutely. Hmm. And some of the future tech that's already here that, I mean... It's sci-fi. We're living in the future, guys. Already. Hmm. Absolutely. Right now. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> let's just jump straight into that. I mean, what's now one of our biggest game platforms is uh, mobile devices. Oh, yeah. Hmm. And literally, the piece of glass which you press and you interface with and you talk to... Was Star Trek? <laughs> it's literally yeah. what it was. Yeah, and, and now we have it. Yeah. Well, and see, I think it's interesting because you know, ten years ago, people had cell phones. Yes. Yeah. But you know, nowadays, when you look at you're on the you're on the bus or you're on the train on your way to school or work, yeah, no, everyone has a phone. It's just a. It's your multimedia device. Like, it's Absolutely. literally... No, you don't go out in public without your phone or at least some sort of way of communicating with yeah. people. That's just the prime way people do so now. Had lunch with my extended family the other day and literally my two nieces that are... What, three and five? Yeah. Each have an iPad mini? Yep. Uh, yep. Um, I know how to use it better than their parents. But so, okay, oh, so... That's scary. Oh. Here on the next... In the next five years, I predict that that trend is only going to continue to grow. I don't think there's going to be people who aren't utilizing, like, because mobile apps are specifically designed to fill time when there's nothing else to fill yes, time. When you're waiting at a bus stop or when you're just waiting in transit. Mm -hmm. um, and with the rise of self-driving cars, it'd be convenient. If they aren't building consoles into the cars, then, you know... More and more people are absolutely going to be using, you know. And mind you, I don't think I don't think we're going to have self-driving cars on the roads and in mass productions in the next five years. But ten years out, fifteen years out, absolutely not. Oh, well, they already are on the roads, though. Yes, mm. I mean, we're yes and no. They um, are they're that, mainly for things like trucks and stuff. I mean, yes, there's a lot of long-range trucks. There are actually self-driving cars that are on the road already. Mm -hmm. yeah. They've seen a bunch of uh, more professional YouTube companies. Yeah. Uh, or YouTubers uh, reviewing them, basically saying, oh, look, "Look, I did, I, I did a drive today mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. freaked the people out. It was a lot of <laughs> this fun. This is the scariest yeah. thing I've ever done. This and, uh, is crazy. I hopped um, out and the car parked itself. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Um, I think on top of that, we're seeing more and more. I mean, over the past few years, and I especially see it boom even more going forward. Oculus Rift and virtual reality. That's mm. really going to redefine a big chunk of the game industry, simply because." Um, right now, the games that we're making for the Oculus Rift, mm. they are using the same design and mechanics that we employ for first-person shooters and for other things. Well, yeah, but we're also looking, we've only got the dev kits at yes. this point still. I mean, we're not, we are not—we don't have AAA titles or even indie titles that are specifically developing for the capabilities of the Oculus Rift because we don't know what the end game capabilities are going to be. There are a few mm. that are designing for... Yeah, you know, yeah, there are Specifically a few. for the Oculus Rift. There are a few. But that being um, said, I think here in the next five years, when the Oculus Rift and some of these other virtual reality headsets... Full um, release. Full release, there's going to be... That part of the industry is going to boom massively. Yes. Okay, mm. well, his <clears throat> next... No, I mean two years, probably next year prediction mm -hmm. then is Microsoft's uh, virtual reality headset. Regardless whether that's going to be augmented reality, where they try to do something a little bit different, where it mm -hmm. interacts with the room or interacts with the person across yeah. from you, mm -hmm. or they decide to do the model that uh, that the Oculus has produced, that the Morpheus for Sony, or the new Samsung Gear. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. those are all virtual reality headsets. Yeah. Um, Xbox has to get on that bandwagon. Yep. Otherwise, they no. Just absolutely, have to market. absolutely. Yep. I definitely see that, especially because you know Sony announced theirs. If Microsoft has probably already been working on something, yes. But now they have that additional fire under their ass to make it something unique. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Which so, could be very exciting. So it'll yeah. pretty much be like the Wii was with, um, yeah, the motion control sort of uh, mechanic for everything. Yeah. As soon as everyone figured out, no, the Wii is actually doing incredibly mm -hmm. well. Uh, Xbox and PlayStation came out with their uh, Connect and the I think iToy or 
Yeah. I don't think it was the iToy. PlayStation I. One thing. Yeah. I don't know. But PlayStation did that the better where they did what it was. Uh, it was. It was five semi-verse. dimensional. Five yeah. dimensional where built into all their controllers, you can actually they actually have tilt control with mm. the controller as well. So it mm-hmm. has it has haptic controllers, D pad, and analog sticks. Mm. So mm-hmm. you're looking at, uh, which I think is probably the better one of the better. Yeah, but it did not really. catch on as well as as mm. the Wii nunchucks did. Well, no, because there was also exclusivity within the Wii, as yeah. those were your control systems. Yep, very true. Uh, very true. If, if they made it the only control systems for PlayStation's mm. latest range of games, which they wouldn't, because that'd be suicide. Yeah. Then yeah, it probably would have been more popular. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. So I I don't know. Kind of when we look at um, you know consoles today, this new line of consoles, there was a big scare with the Xbox One that you know there was going to be an always online thing. I personally don't see an issue with that, but that's because I've always had decent internet. I do understand that there are like soldiers away at war and whatnot, and you know um, they very much would want access to some of these AAA games. But I definitely see going forward kind of the lines between online and offline beginning to blur at times. Like, you look Mm. at Dark Souls 2, and that is almost exclusively a single-player game, but there is such a community and there's so many elements that come from having it always online. Well, I think that is a stipulation there where I'm saying... I would say I'm fine with always online as long as I'm benefiting from online features in some way. Mm. Not just because ultimately... It's better than um, it's the better way to avoid piracy. Because mm-hmm. I mean, if they can continuously check that you're you know using the right CD key, etc., mm-hmm. etc., that it's actually yeah. verifying it to you, then of course that that's where you want everything to go. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the be on end all of it. But give me you know give me give, give me a reason, give me a treat extra to do it. Yeah, yes. So, yeah, where with Dark Souls, it's just literally in, yeah you can actually interact with everyone else and even Journey, mm-hmm. I think. Um, yeah, it had just the random drop in, drop out of the just yeah. random people mm. that and really that... added to the gameplay. Oh yes. Um, even though you could literally just play through the entire, like each one of those games, just by themselves mm-hmm. as single player experiences. Yes. Assassin's yeah. Creed Black Flag had specific online events that were occurring. You're, you're playing a single player game, uh, for the most part. You could go play multiplayer yeah. if you want, but you're playing the single player game. Uh, and if you were connected online, you would have white whales to spawn and basically trade ships that had lots of bounty on them. Hmm. So you could go hunt those down and thereby hmm. get the special loot or the gratuitous amount of treasure to increase capacity in the game. In in Watch Dogs, I believe this made it into the final release, but basically you'd be running down the street doing your single player mission. And if you were online, then occasionally you would just get be notified that there is someone else Ooh. in the neighborhood near you that is hacking into your phone. And Ooh. so you had to find them and kill them and or prevent them from, like, chase them away. Oh, I love that. Hmm. That yeah. sounds beautiful. Yeah. Also, and that was a, another player. Yeah. Also, they had a little thing where you could download a smart, like a smartphone app mm-hmm. that if anyone was playing Watch Dogs in your area, you can literally just track them on a little map and say, all right, I uh, will change the traffic lights just in that area, just because I can. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually, yeah. Yeah, it's just trying of trolling people without, I don't know, any sort of direct confrontation or even yeah. them owning the game. And I like that, and that, that definitely worked within the world of mm. Mm. Watch Dogs. And maybe even to a little bit more of an extreme. Uh, I mean, Grand Theft Auto V benefited fantastically from having that multiplayer <laughs> uh, aspect where it was a large enough world that you could go away and explore other things, but the ensuing chaos from having someone chase you down with a jet or a helicopter or something is so much more fun, because yeah. let's be honest, they do it a lot better than AI, <laughs> and a lot funnier. <laughs> mm. So, okay, here's another question. You know, nowadays we see a lot of this, there's a lot of debate and discussion around Steam's early access and Steam Greenlight and a few of these other services where people, in a way, pay in order to alpha and beta test games. Hmm. Um, and I've, I've seen both sides of the conversations and I very much, um, I'm, I'm all on the side of, I think it is good for the developers to have this time, but as a consumer, I very much understand that there is a risk like, I believe there's been a few games where people will pay for the um, early access version only to have updates for the early access get cut off. Hmm. And so they're left with a half-baked game that inevitably, inevitably gets pulled off Steam. Yeah, that they can't get the money from because yes. it's all been spent away. Yes. Yeah, but you know, I mean... That's the risk I, you take. Hmm. I feel so, like it's kind of like Kickstarter, but the presentation of how it works hmm. by yeah, being on Steam much Greenlight. presented as full games and people are sort of forgetting that wait no these games aren't actually made in their entirety they're just yeah. sort of releasing it so hey no you can pay a little bit now you can play it for now and then mm-hmm. when it actually comes out you can pay again 
Well, not actually. There's a lot of places, there's a lot of games that you pay for early access and you get the full <laughs> version when it comes out. Yeah. So pay less now and yeah. when you get the full version later. Hmm. I mean, I played. That's what I, Minecraft did. Yeah, they Minecraft, said each, yeah. each, as it got closer and closer to launch, you'd pay closer and closer to the actual price of the game. Yep. But like I played, or I paid like five to ten dollars for Minecraft and nowadays it's like 15 or 20 or something. Yep. Yeah. It's um, still a pretty cheap game. But, yeah. 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 And, and, you know, I think there are some games that they can be designed in such a way that it very much appeals to that where you can very easily produce content. A notch could always produce more blocks and more mobs, and that would just make Minecraft more rich during mm. that alpha phase. Mm. Um, but really, Minecraft is today with less what it used to be. Or it's, it has more today than it used to, but it's it's the same fundamental game, exploration and discovery and crafting. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, there mm. are some aspects which are expanded. I mean... Water exploration has never been a big thing, so you've yeah. never been given the incentive to basically make water breathing unless you want to build an underwater base. But mm-hmm. now they have underwater temples, yes. so they open up the entire thing. Yes, as was you know horses, so actually generating mounts before you could <coughs> ride a pig, but you could actually control where it yeah. went. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, there are other small game changer dynamics uh, that are being done by the core Minecraft team. We're not including the mod yeah. teams because my god, mm. but. Um, well, yeah. so that, that brings up a very interesting question. I, I also think it's very possible that over the course of the next five years or so, we will continue to see more and more blurring of that line between developer and community, where mods are very much integrated into the game. And, like, you look at Dota, and where a lot of the money comes from Dota is when the, the community base creates models and outfits and stuff for yeah. the heroes like and they could be just littlest sort of things but it does create that content for well the makers of that game without actually making that content or paying yes. someone to do it that's been happening since forever though i mean you yeah. think of second life mm-hmm. i mean that's yeah, yeah very true yeah people created their own stuff for ages but yeah and that's how it ran more or less mm, yeah and i was doing that as well and yeah i remember that was around back when bebo was the social media that you used mm-hmm. pre myspace See, but now I even see... Are you old and... <laughs> I'm old, okay. <laughs> um, but even, like, I know friends who have explicitly bought Skyrim for the mods. Mm-hmm. And, like, that is... I, it's, it's already kind of a thing, but I definitely see going forward where that is almost part of the selling point. Mm-hmm. The, the, produ- or the, the game makers are almost creating a network or a system in such a way that more content can be easily added to it. Like, that's what happened with Minecraft. Yeah, yeah actually, Daisy. that's a good point. If I never would have bought Arma 2 if it weren't for the Daisy mod. Yep. Yeah. 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 And, you know, and, and... And that's where they're getting the funds to make Arma 3. Yeah. Right? Which is interesting. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, you know? and they're making very good buddies with the um, But Daisy chances guys. are there is going to be a very strong modding community within that, and it will mm. be the game will be built in such a way to make it easy for people to mod. I think to highlight that early access uh, thing we were talking about, yes, I think there will still be early access if I'm putting prediction up there. Mm -hmm. But I think the term alpha and Mm -hmm. the term beta will change for devs more so than than, Mm. uh, than consumers just because I know I would much rather release something that I would consider being maybe a late beta and just calling it an alpha so people kind of go oh wow look how good it it's is it's so alpha. good now mm, it's yeah. going to be so great later you know get everyone involved get everyone buy it I mean I played Cube World as well mm-hmm. and that's the other thing like Cube World was fantastic and that's very much an alpha mm-hmm. uh, but they stopped updating it stopped updating it but at mm-hmm. the same time super fun mm-hmm. um so I think we've kind of covered five years out. Yes. Um, and this is a good time for us to kind of transition in ten years out so stretch Into a little bit the future um I know, I know, kind of going back to what we had talked about, about consoles, um, there does seem to be this schism in the community where some people are very much of the mindset that consoles are on their way out. They're going to die. They're going the way of the dinosaur. There are others that believe that they are yeah, always simply, going to be a thing. Yeah, or they'll just change yes. for whatever people will use them. Mm-hmm. So like you said with the, was it the car thing, that mm-hmm. people just literally chuck them in their cars that just be a more powerful smartphone or something. No, yeah. no. Look, the reality is consoles will die once people no longer want exclusive titles that mm-hmm. are owned by the console creators. Mm-hmm. I mean, all they have to do to keep their consoles live is say, we don't release this on PC. Yeah. Yeah. And annoy maybe everyone on PC. I be cutting off a lot of their market. But that's just it. Yeah, I feel like if... Yes, yes and no. Because I feel like at the end of the day, at least in that mindset, I think... If the consumers make it very clear that, hey, yeah, no, 
there aren't enough other developers publishing for this thing. If only Halo came out on the Xbox One, I would not buy the Xbox One. That's why I bought the Xbox. Hmm. That's why I bought every single... Uh, yes, but it was with the idea that products. going forward, you will have access to all those Xbox exclusives. Hmm. No, only Halo. That's all Only I Halo. I wanted the Halo experience. Same with Pokemon. See, I, I would not... Nintendo, only Pokemon. I... I've owned every single iteration of the Nintendo mobile device, mm-hmm. and I've only ever played Pokemon. Hmm. And that's hmm. all I wanted. I just okay. just wanted that yeah. experience. I guess I guess I wouldn't spend you know three hundred four hundred dollars on a game, um, but, but just, you know if that's well, yeah. Well, I think it's been said that it's, yeah, the console is pretty much made by the games that are on it. I think yes, very pretty true. Pretty much well. Yeah, yeah, that was foretold pretty much when most of the newer consoles came out, where there were yeah. little to no games. People weren't buying them because, well, there wasn't anything to play. Yeah. I do feel, however, that um, PBS Idea or Game Channel Game Show brought up a phenomenal um, article or a phenomenal idea in one of his videos where he discussed the idea that, oh, well, maybe consoles will die off, but in the sense that, you know, our mobile phones and our mobile devices are growing more and more powerful each year. Hmm. So here in the next 10 years or so, so, we'll be playing, we'll have access to play, you know, modern day style Call of Duty and Halo and all those kind of games on our mobile devices we'll just sync them up to a bigger screen and have a controller that is wireless or mm. you know whatever method for play it is yeah and that was a um, pull a while ago that you wouldn't actually play the game on your like on your phone you'd just mm-hmm. send the input through it and then you'd it pretty much be uh, you're Streamed. running the game yeah yeah you're running the game on mm-hmm. your own computer so you'd have just a base of operations that's at your home and then play whatever you want on the go. Which I love that. I like the idea of integration of all our devices. Mm. Yeah. And, and that excites me more than the idea of whatever games can become. Mm-hmm. And maybe that maybe that's what we're looking at. We're looking at games will be created for integration across our devices. We've had yeah. uh, recent games, you know, have iPad integration and such, whether mm-hmm. it be for maps or for uh, aerial strikes and such. Yeah, yeah. was it Battlefield 4? You can literally have another screen open or just on your iPad and just have another map there. Yep. And he's detailing exactly where everyone is. Which I quite like that. Yeah. And some people have said it's really annoying to look down at your lap and look back up. Yeah. I kind of like that. It feels almost more immersive in, in, the, in the sense that it gives an aspect of physicality to it. Yeah. Hmm. Or at least it could be used in the right hands as a, like as a game designer to give the players an additional screen to look down at. You could make that a map or you could make that a something. And then it feels like you're holding that tangible thing. Oh, I think hmm. we're actually looking over the fact that the way you did that as well. But yeah. it's built in. I thought, yeah, yeah, I signed up. That's yeah. what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were talking about, we were talking about iPad oh, know. oh, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> yes, um, but yeah, it's true. Um, there's been lots of lots of different. Yeah, um, absolutely. At this and point. I think I think um, that kind of at least that brings up to me, you know, if we have these systems that you know um, the games are streamed in and or they are um, provided in some untraditional sense, you know, I know there's also these days. A lot of dispute over, you know, who technically owns a game. When you buy a game on Steam, hmm. is that as much yours as if you went to the store and bought a game? Yeah. From a legal sense, yeah, you never really bought the game itself. I think you, you merely just bought, purchased the license. Yeah, you just buy a license to play that game, mm-hmm. and that physical copy you had was just a way of using that game. Yeah. So now it's all digital. Well, that physical copy, they can't literally take a physical copy away from you, yeah. but they can limit your access to a digital copy. I feel so- like. Mm. Sorry, that's another whole nother discussion. I won't. Do we do mm. we think we'll ever get to a point where there will just not be like you won't ever have a CD? Oh no! You'll just you'll yeah. get a code that you can just plug yeah. into. Well, the there'll internet. always be that sort of um, old sort of generation of folks that will have an old computer and will necessarily just kind of want those old okay. CDs. Just so maybe not ten years out, sort of but I do think way down the road they'll almost be kind of like vintage vinyl stuff. Yeah, where it's right. like can I highlight something too? Hipster. <laughs> <laughs> I literally just, we've had just out on my main road, uh-huh. two vinyl oh, yeah, stores. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about this. <laughs> two separate vinyl stores open within two months of each other. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> there may be people that want the game box. Hmm. Well, so, oh, okay. And the game loot. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm always going to want the, the loot yeah. and the All swag that, that comes with it. Sweet merch. Um, but, merch. okay, mm. so I know, um, I believe it's the PlayStation Online Network at the moment. They're currently running something where, or they're at least attempting to get this thing going. But the idea is that you are um, renting the game. You can pay, you know, ten to fifteen dollars, and you have that. You own that game for seven days, um, hmm. so you can play as much as you want during that time, or not at all. Um, but the idea being, 
if that can give the the user an opportunity to see if they like the game just for a couple bucks um or you know it can get them to pay more money if it's a game that is, mm. has replayability yeah if they sort of get stuck into it after mm-hmm. a week yeah they're more liable to actually start spending a little bit more cash yeah. just to keep on going to that subscription and i think i'd kind of like that because i i know i have issues with demos for games, you know, it's very difficult for, you know, a one hour or a two hour demo mm. to reveal to me the, the allure of a game. Mm. But, and also because it, it detracts time away from developers to make yeah, this demo it takes nice a lot. and tight. It's literally a game in itself that you're trying to encapsulate an entire thing you've created mm-hmm. in several, probably even years. Yeah. Encapsulated in maybe one or two hours. No, yes. It's very hard. And so, so if you could rent the game for three days, five days, it is. And you yeah, could just you'd... play a little while, get your taste, and even if it were free or if it were, you know, for that very first purchase, um, that would give you the opportunity to, the game developers could focus on making just the intro as strong as it can be. Because hmm. everyone will do it. And especially if you make that initial purchase, that initial renting, like you get one day free when the new game came out. Hmm. And then after that, you can pay five bucks well, per day. Well, definitely that does already happen. It's more mm. like Steam releases games, which are free for the weekend. Yeah, mm. yeah, very true. That is happening. Very true. I mean, no, I I don't really like the renting thing. Like the reason I don't do, I don't get the Steam ones that mm-hmm. are, it's free for the weekend is because I don't like that time restriction. Mm-hmm. Like I play ge- games when it is good and ready within my time. Yeah, like, you know. I love playing them, mm-hmm. but they're very low down on my priority list about yep. when I get to play them. I mm-hmm. need to make other shit first, and I mm-hmm. need to... Okay, so here's a question. Have you guys heard of Netflix? I know you Australian folk. Netflix and Hulu? Netflix. Yes, we, yes, yes, we do. So imagine imagine where you just paid a monthly subscription. Yes, And that gave that. you access to any and all games that Steam had to offer. Hmm. And maybe they just had maybe like a calendar, so like... For the next 30 days, these 30 games are completely free. Play them to your heart's, heart's content. Do that. Mm. I would do that so much, and I would prefer that to buying. Yep. I w- mm. would just buy an annual now, subscription what, and what jump if it were, play stuff. What if it were quite expensive? Like, you know, maybe 100 bucks a month. So the cost of a game or two, but you got 30 games mm. to play as much as you'd like. No, because mm. I don't think I play $100 worth of games a month. Yeah. Mm. I, I don't. That said, I yeah, play probably $100 mm. worth of games a year. Yeah. And okay. that's a sad fact, but that's yeah. the reality of it. Like, mm. I buy a Humble Bundle, and that'll probably last me the year. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if they had various <laughs> tiers of purchase? So, you know, you could spend 50 bucks and get, you know... Um, yeah, access to maybe just little indie titles that would normally just yeah, be a couple yeah. of bucks. And then it would slowly amp up until you get AAA titles. Or maybe, maybe there's 100. a pool of games... And, you know, when you purchase this, it's like, oh, well, if you purchase 50 bucks, it unlocks this tier and below of mm. these games. Possibly. I mean... Sometimes it doesn't require a, a, a large studio producing game to make a fun game. We all mm-hmm. know this. Yeah. And I know I, I like to watch uh, Nerd Cube's YouTube channel. He has a thing on Fridays called Three Free Game Fridays. Yeah. And he finds three free games mm. to play. And some of them are exceptionally fun. Yeah. Like some of them you could spend a week or two yeah. playing. Mm. And so- <laughs> sudden thought, in a way, does the Humble Bundle kind of do that? subscription based thing where once a month they come out with you know a ha- eight games that for just above average paying price you're getting those eight games you don't have any control over what those eight games are but mm. you know but you do have them and some you of can, them you've even you played can, before yeah you can choose to pay a whole whole butt ton for it and yeah. get that yeah no it is that tiered system where you get the two nicer games yeah. Or you could just pay absolutely nothing at all and just get these, yeah, they're sort of yeah. okay games. I will always jump up the tier. Yeah. yeah. I always jump oh, up the tier. And I love the fact that if you have already owned the other Steam game prior, like the, with this within the Humble Bundle, you can just gift off that code. Yeah. Mm. No, I like that. I say, one of my friends hasn't played this. I'll just buy the Humble Bundle and shoot this code to them. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I've, I know I've sort of educated people in just having a whole bunch of Humble Bundle titles and I've just said, hey, you haven't played Portal. You need to have Portal. Here's Portal. And I'll just have it there. You want to know what I used to do? I used to buy several of the same Humble Bundle, and then I'd just have a bunch, a big fat stack of codes. So for people's birthdays, I'd just send them a bunch of games. I a bunch of games. I wouldn't be mad. <laughs> um, I would now I, be now I know. furious. They would never know that I only spent $7 on them. Ooh. And they'd be like, oh, there's 50 bucks worth of games. Thanks, man. Mm, that's um, awesome. But I, I, I haven't done that in a while, just so you guys know. 
Uh, <laughs> I'll be um, incredibly dubious of any game you send me now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we so, already buy the Humble Bundle anyway, so it wouldn't work. Oh, yeah, no, we just buy it the straight so up. So here's something, kind of, and, and this is anywhere between five to ten years out, I feel. But very recently, um, the president of ESPN's uh, sports um, network, or whatever it is, um, his name, John Skipper, recently made an announcement saying that, you know, esports is not and won't be sport. Hmm. Um, yeah, and I you've think been telling us pretty much for most of today. Yeah, and, all that sort of jazz. and I think I think if you guys remember, uh, I believe his name was Roger Ebert. He was a big film critic. That he was the one who said, "Oh yeah, games cannot and will not be art." Hmm. And now, five years after he said it, I mean, he passed away. Yeah, no, but... people still reference him and just say, "Yeah." And now know. there are so many games that are actively trying to be art. Hey, can I just highlight hmm. this though? But they are still nowhere near accepted within a fine art community yeah. as hmm. art. I, I think that is a prediction for the next ten years. Yeah, where games will be accepted as a fine art medium. Yeah. Right now, if you are, you know, in even a contemporary fine art school. There are those that will actively uh, dissuade you from exploring mm-hmm. video games as an artistic avenue. So, you know, yeah. next 10 years, yeah, video yeah. games will become fine art. Absolutely. So, okay, we're going to go one more step further, 15 years in the future. Um, I know th- Minecraft today is massive amongst uh, kids. Yeah, that's, that's huge. just not going to die. It's impossible for it to. I, I see Minecraft still being what it is today, if, except bigger. Hmm. Plus, I think... The kids that are today, like, okay, so right now, as game developers, we have ideas for games we want to make. We got our ideas from the media we grew up with, which for a lot of us happens to be the games we grew up with. So Legend of Zelda, um, Star Fox, you know, Pokemon, etc. When the kids of today grow up to become game developers, they will be creating a lot more games yeah, more exploratory. of the style. So creation. Yes. Sort of Where Minecraft is very much exactly that. Exploration, discovery, yeah. And maybe more, all more social games. I think Minecraft is very much a social game in itself. Yes. Building stuff with other people. So perhaps there'll be a lot of games that you get to build or at least cooperate with a whole bunch yeah. of people. And and I think I think Minecraft in a lot of ways does so much good for the brain. Like it sounds weird, but just oh, no, it, it seems like a very healthy an educational activity mm. exploration creation and play play yeah mm-hmm. socialization yep. you look at nitty gritty it does teach incredible and skills. so so imagine 15 20 25 years out when those games had become the triple a the call of duties these are the things that are being pumped out and added to every single year can you imagine how that is going to have such a profound effect on on gamer culture if gamer is even a term still being used at that point. Because, you know, we don't use the word movier or someone who listens to music. You are just a person. So there's the question there as well. When are games going to become such a pervasive part of uh, general yeah, social life? I see them being very close right now. I figure there's no doubt in my mind 15 years out, gamer is just going to be a term that maybe, if anything, if it's not gone, it will be, it'll be in such a different state than it is now. Hmm. In the same way that we use the term movie buff now. Yes. Where it's someone who is... Super into movies. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Um, I also think I think going uh, 15 years out right now, the development of uh, Unity, UDK, or Unreal 4, there's a whole lot of new engine... Um, oh, yeah. I engine. Think it, there's been a yeah. huge push for making uh, engines that are not so much sort of more fancy, but more user-friendly. Yeah. So I think Unity made it so pretty much anyone could create their game. Yes. Yeah. They have so much, yeah, they created so much sort of uh, learning material that you could literally teach mm-hmm. yourself how to do this stuff. In so, saying that, yeah. if and if everyone is making their own games within 15 years, mm-hmm. like everyone does just jump on and make their own game and they post it on the game tube or the new yeah. new, new new grounds. Mm. Um, <laughs> then new 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 grounds. New 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 grounds. I still think it's going to be in the context where everyone today can make their own movies. Yeah. Where, where there's absolutely going to be amateur games. But the quality of games are just going to ramp up to be that next big thing. Yes. Hmm. Um, and that, that just kind of comes with our craft kind of being, like, aging and becoming more mature and so on and so forth. It's true. So, um, what, final thoughts? What are the final predictions then? Uh, you know, final thoughts, I think... The Make next... a prediction. <laughs> yes. So I think game... There's, there's a lot of doom and gloom with the game industry fearing the next big crash with the markets being oversaturated and I'd love to have spent more time on that talking about that today however I have a very optimistic 
kind of plan for the future of games. Mm. I think at this point, bushy tails. Yeah, I think at this point, games are not going to go away. Mm. They are. No, we're here to stay. We're here to stay. It's a media time now. I and I, I very much think that moving forward as an industry, um, the games that people are playing today, Minecraft and stuff, are going to radically overhaul the way people and the world view games and mm. play games. Mm-hmm. Your Connor? final thoughts, Connor? Thoughts? Yeah, I can't really top that, I guess. I think I can only just agree that, um, yeah, there'll be a massive sort of change mm-hmm. towards, I think, less... I don't know, yeah, less sort of huge budget games and all that sort yeah. of stuff, and more creational sort of things. If everyone can make their own sort of games in the future, mm-hmm. um, it'll become more of a yeah, a little inclusive sort of thing. So yeah. you won't have just people needing programmers and artists and everything. Mm-hmm. You'll just, yeah, you can just literally either buy those assets or literally make your own game from absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, and I might, I might put one more thing on top of what I was saying. Um, has anyone, or you guys have seen the movie Her, correct? Yes. Mm. Um, about the guy who falls in love with the artificial intelligence, etc. Um, one of my favorite things about that movie, besides just being a phenomenal movie, um, I love the fact that all of the games portrayed in that movie were about empathy. They were very much about making a human connection with an AI. And I think with the AI that we have today, there's this thing called deep learning AI. And the idea is that the program teaches itself based on user inputs and what it picks up from, you know. Um, and we're already making big advances. Fifteen hmm. years out, I see every NPC in a game you're able to walk up to in Skyrim. And imagine if you could have a massive conversation and learn about the life story of the hmm. the carriage driver at the very beginning of the game. Hmm. Or, you know, Fantastic. come back every yeah. day and, and he's be, telling you about new issues or his daughter or, you know, something. Yeah, and it'd be literally easy enough as just swapping and changing a couple of variables saying, all right, no, you built, yeah, you, were, you yeah. had a daughter or you were <laughs> living in another area. You just see yeah. those sort of facts and... It would just and with procedural learn generation roughly and what would happen. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a lot of potential for that moving forward. Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't think we touched on it much, but I think my final thoughts, my final predictions, uh, with VR becoming a big thing and, mm-hmm. and, uh, and augmented reality as well, that we're going to see better interfaces mm-hmm. now uh, as far as probably haptic interface or maybe yeah. preemptive ha- so uh, more haptic interface. So more intuitive sort of... Um, Define a haptic because I know there. Are, I, okay, I so we're, we're talking like maybe yeah. we're talking specifically like uh, about uh, movement and, and touch mm-hmm. based thing where we've got like uh, fifth sense style things that are coming to play now. Where yeah, we've got. Um, I mean, we've got we've got the Omni, which is a, a unidirectional uh, treadmill that yeah. hooks into your game that can track your running. We have the uh, we have razors. Uh, in Hydra? Hydra, thank yeah. you very much. It's pretty much, yeah. It, it's a uh, Wii sort of remote, just Tracks to a better degree. Are. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I think maybe we'll sh- we... These things are are a clumsy interface, but as is the keyboard and mouse when you have an Oculus on. Hmm. Also yeah. a clumsy, inelegant interface. We might be moving more towards something like what Emotive is producing, where Emotive produces the Emotive Epoch, which is uh, a neurological interface where it reads your brainwaves and does stuff. Yeah, which is super, super cool, and I've used before. It's so fancy. And the thing is, mm-hmm. it's I think it's clunky to start off with, but the more you'd, you'd use it, so I think a friend of mine used it to play Minecraft, he stopped playing Minecraft, and more he got into the mindset of, I'm just watching another person play Minecraft, and it just happens to be exactly what I would think he would do. Mm-hmm. And it would just sort of intuitively just, yeah, after a while, this was after like a year or so of playing it, just imagine what you could do with that. In any sort of game whatsoever. Yeah. So it's yeah. great. What yeah, you could, you could yeah. literally yeah. do anything. Imagine what you could do in Maya. Yeah. <laughs> you could just literally and, and stare at the screen and it just appears. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think that kind of covers our closing thoughts, unless anyone else has any final notes. Um, no. Yeah. Super optimistic. It's gonna yeah. be fun. Right, yeah. Then. No, I think it's great, and I think you know I would. This is my. There's no industry I would rather be in. Mm. Um, that being said. Thank you, everyone, for paying or tuning in for this week's uh, Con Loss podcast. Um, we'll see you guys next Wednesday. Yeah. Um, Don't forget to look at the website and all the other general videos we have. Yes, yeah, so you can catch us at conlostpro.com. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you know, if you like to subscribe, yeah, because... like, subscribe, and uh, comment because we do actually read your comments. We're great. We take sort of great delight in talking to you. Yes, it's brilliant. 
Thank you very much, everyone. Much love.